Who are you and uh, who do you work for? Uh, I'm Aaron Saigo and uh, for the purposes of this interview we're going to be talking about um, the tablet coming from Make Play Live, uh, which is a project that we're working on right now to bring a open tablet to the market. And what exactly makes this tablet open as compared with all the other, I mean there's you know, so many tablets now, what's different here? So there's uh, two ways that we really look at the openness of it. One is in terms of participation. So uh, the design of the software, the user experience, um, the entire stack really of technology on it has been developed uh, in the open using you know, very typical open source meritocratic practices and will continue to be done this way. Um, after the actual process of, of making it, you have it in your hands, you bought it, um, you know, borrowing it at a friend's place, you can actually then take it and do what you want with it. You can uh, create new applications, um, put a new operating system on it if you want, it's completely open. No locked bootloader, no restrictions of what you can and cannot run on it. It's got a very vanilla um, Linux uh, stack on top of it, so you're not hemmed in by uh, you know, we need to make the device you know, a certain way. Um, you can take a lot of titles that already exist and throw it right on there. So it's really built for participation um, from right from the beginning of the device being itself being created to what you can do with it after it's purchased. Um, the other side of the openness is the actual technology itself, the source code. Um, it's as much as possible completely open. We right now have two blobs left that we're going to be working over in the long term to get rid of on our products, um, but the source code is actually open uh, from, again, bottom to top. So you can uh, know that you've got a device that you have the engineering behind, um, and that invites you to participate as well. Um, now, obviously, a lot of the early customers are going to be people who are, be people who are involved in open source uh, development, people who want to write their own apps or, or customize yeah. it in their own ways. Um, but, you know, I think there's some people, there's a lot of people in sort of the Linux community, I think, who don't know how to code at all. They just love the idea of supporting yep. these sorts of projects. If I was one of those people, which I am, <laughs> what, yeah. what, what would I do with this tablet? Sure. So, um, it, yeah, it's actually kind of one of the interesting things, first off, that people think that you can only contribute if you code. And there's a lot of other ways. I mean, we have, we see in the open source communities, people that are doing all kinds of things to actually promote and, and uh, improve products from writing documentation to doing promotion, etc. But assuming that you're completely uninterested in, in that, you just want to actually use this, this device, um, the user experience is, is really centered around the concept of activities, which uh, allows you to take whatever you're doing in life, whether it's a class project at school or a business project at work or vacation you're taking or whatever it is that you're doing and you actually uh, let the system know hey I am you know planning a vacation to Jamaica or um, you know this is my activity for um, you know calculus and you then bring together all of the information on the device that relates to it and lets you switch between it so even if you're not actually interested in getting involved in the technology itself the technology actually uh, enables you to hopefully be a little bit more organized and a little bit better at what you're doing in your life so and as we were talking before I started the video here about you know how most tablets now whether they be Android or iOS or something else you open it up and there's just like a list of apps this is a different experience could you describe that a little bit yeah so what you describe is what we call the app bucket Right? You buy a device and it's a bucket that you stuff apps into and then occasionally pull the apps out. And that's the entire point behind it. And we thought, well, maybe we could do, I mean, there's so much power in these devices, right? And it's such a really interesting device or uh, interaction concept. We actually touch and feel and, and push things around. We thought there must be something better that you can do with it. So yeah, the Activities UI um, is the primary user interface. Um, and we've tried to limit as well the UI maze. So when you want to launch an application, you simply pull the bar from the top down, the, t the uh, panel that has you know, status information, time, etc. And it shows the application launcher as well as all running applications. Um, you pull out from the left side or right side um, the activity switcher that lets you see in kind of like a Rolodex fashion all of your activities and switch between them very, very quickly. Um, and then in your activities, you aggregate all your information. Um, and then when you switch activities, it actually you know, turns it into the device for that specific whatever it is you're, you're doing. Um, so it's very flexible and you can be either very general such as everything to do with work or very specific, you know, um, the you know, canoeing trip I'm taking next week with Ted. Um, so you get to really define what it is. So while you do have apps, we have an add-on app as well that you can download new apps or books from Project Gutenberg or wallpapers and other such things. Um, 
uh, you actually can use the device as is to watch your media, read ebooks, uh, read office documents, but also actually build and reflect the uh, structure of your life. So, so even without before you download your first app, you have yeah. some things here that you don't necessarily get on all tablets that exist. You can yes. including you, you've got the web browser. Everybody has yes. a web browser. You've yeah, got exactly. a video player. Everybody has that. But you've got the Office Suite, which doesn't not everybody gets gives you that for free. And, exactly. And yeah. you were saying that this uh, this Office Suite has actually got great compatibility with. Yeah, it actually um, when you run the conformance tests on it, it actually tests better than any other uh, Office Suite on any mobile platform available today for opening Microsoft Office format documents. Um, this has been, uh, it's called Caligra, um, Nokia actually uses it on some of their phones uh, right now, so the actual engine behind it anyways, we have a more tablet friendly UI on top of it. Um, but yeah, it's really, really uh, highly compatible with both uh, the OpenOffice, LibreOffice uh, format, um, the Open Document format, um, as well as Microsoft's uh, Office format. So yeah, you can take your PowerPoint presentation or your uh, Open Document word processor and uh, document and open it up and view it on the machine, as well as yeah, PDFs, of course, and eBooks and comic book format and etc. So, so the the tablet we're talking about today is clearly the first one, which will start shipping in May. Yes. It's a seven inch. It has a one gigahertz analogic yep. processor, eight hundred by forty pixel screen. But you know, the the project isn't just about this one tablet, right? Like no, this is a beginning point. So we really like the seven inch format because uh, it's something you can throw in your pocket. It's light, um, it's yeah, very, very portable in ways that the larger 10-inch tablets aren't. Um, but it's really the starting point for us. We are planning on bringing out a larger tablet because there are people, of course, who do like that larger format, um, using it in slightly different uh, circumstances often. Um, and eventually we'll be bringing out ones with you know, GPS, 3G, etc. So this is really just a starting point and was a, a nice place to actually see, you know, is there demand for an open tablet? Is there a demand for a device that has um, this activity-centric uh, concept on it? Um, so we've been, you know, the last six months or so showing it at various uh, tech shows as well as dragging it around to uh, just random social events, barbecues and whatnot, and, and actually putting it in front of people to see how they react to it. Um, and then the ultimate test was, yeah, if we actually offer um, a device you can get it on, what will be the response? The response has been really, really good so far. So this is, yeah, this is the beginning um, of hopefully many, many other devices. And hopefully as well, not just tablets. We've been looking at other kinds of devices as well that we think um, are interesting and, and really aren't, just as we feel tablets haven't really delivered their full potential for people. Um, other device categories that are probably, we feel, not doing the same. And uh, yeah, we think they should all be able to work together um, my, my favorite and the one I'm personally living for at the moment is, it, is when I can plug a little box onto my TV and not have remote control but just sit down with my tablet and uh, use my the same interface I use when I'm just viewing stuff on my tablet and control what's on the TV. I hate TV interfaces. hate them. hate remote controls. They're even worse. Um, so we're looking at beyond just tablet as well. But this is just a, a really uh, achievable for us starting point. Um, and one that seems to be resonating uh, significantly anyways with the market. So. And I guess also beyond just the, uh, the hardware device that you're talking about here too, you know, yeah. if, if, if some other company uh, decided, hey, we like this idea, we like this idea of using this software as an alternative yeah. to Android or WebOS or yeah. iOS, um, you're open to working with them as well, yes? We actually hope this happens. Um, we've said right from the beginning that if we're successful, we'll actually breed our own competition. Um, and we, yeah, this would be a great, a great sign of success for us if, if this happens. Um, one of the reasons we started uh, the project was because we had actually developed the software, felt that it was uh, significant in what it could, you know, do. Um, but trying to get the first, you know, hardware vendors to commit to actually shipping devices with it on it by default was that's a very scary, you know, proposition for for you know uh, some of these companies. Um, so we decided to show that it's possible, that you can do it, that there is demand for it. Um, and yeah, since we've actually announced, we actually have been working quietly with a couple of, of uh, mid-range uh, tablet uh, companies that are actually toying with and have started to build plasma active uh, images for their devices. So yes, I hope that we see lots of, of plasma active devices of all sorts in the future. Great.